Hello, I'm Rosie Hardy. This is Rosie Hardy Gardening. And this is the second in our introductory how to buy a plant and then pot it on if you are a beginner or new gardener. So we have done the buying of the plant. You may have some plugs. You may have some slightly larger plants like so. What are you going to need to actually get those plants potted on into larger pots? Well, firstly, you will need some containers and you have to work out the size of container that you need for each particular plant. What you have to remember is if you're doing plug plants like this, these are tiny. These are four centimeters. They cannot go into a pot as big as this because it's like them swimming in an ocean. Far too big. So always go up in stages. This would like to go into a small-ish container like this. That would be ideal. Now notice that I am saying that the plugs are going on into containers. This is too small to go straight out into the garden. You need it to have a much more established root ball which will grow in this container. It will put on more growth on the top and then you will be able to put it out into the garden. So this little one needs to go into a container. Whereas a big plant like this that you've bought from the garden centre, which has got plenty of root on it, like so, can be put out straight into the garden. Also, in terms of the plants that I showed before that we had bought from the garden centre, this Sempervivans is perfectly able to go out into the garden as well although it makes a really good container plant. Once you've got the container and you know what size container you are going to use, you will need compost. Get a good multi-purpose compost for potting on. Something that is nice and friable, doesn't have huge big pieces in it. Um, if you are unsure, ask someone and ask to see what the compost, nice and friable like this, flows out of your hands. That's what you want. You don't want things which have got huge big lumps of wood and bark in it. Once you've got that, you fill your container part way, tamp it down a little bit. That just makes it a little bit firmer in the bottom. Take your plug and sit it in the center of the container like so, and then start filling up around the side of the plant, tamp again, little bit of pressure, not too much, and then make sure if it's not full, just be aware sometimes people will say, oh, fill it right up to the top. That's fine, but I would always suggest making sure that there's just a little bit of a lip inside here because that will hold your first lot of water when you water this plant into its pot. So that is a happy little plug in a smallish container. We've got this next size plant. Now, when we've tipped this out, we will notice that it's not fully rooted yet. It has enough root, but it's not fully rooted. So it's not quite ready to be potted on. Let it flower. Once it's finished flowering, then you can put it up a pot size. So from this nine centimeter, it could go into something like that, which is a 13 centimeter. That gives a reasonable amount of extra compost for that plant to grow on into. So we're not potting that one up yet. We then have this one and this succulent one likes a free draining compost. So although this multi-purpose is really good, it's probably just a little bit too heavy for what this succulent requires. And when you take this out of the pot, you will notice it has got white pieces in the compost here. This white is called perlite and you can use perlite and just mix it into the compost that you've got. Be aware that if you use perlite, you will get it as a product like this which is very, very dusty and very dry. Read the back of the packet. It will tell you to put some water into this product, leave it for a little while, then use it and mix it in with your compost. 
There are other products that you can utilize and use in here. We are now using this, which is milled cork, and I prefer to use that now. And you just use a small amount and mix it in. And it's a bit like making crumble mix. And you're just literally making it so that that lot of compost looks as though it's got different flecks in it. This is the old stuff, which is completely brown. So you can see the difference with the amount that's in there. That will give you enough drainage. And then this plant does not want to go again. You'd probably go for something this sort of size. Gives you plenty of room around the outside. And you want to be making sure that it is high enough in the container for you to be able to get the compost in and so that its leaves are not touching the surface. So it will be there. It is just proud of the surface of this container and it looks happy once it's in there. I will just finish this off. I won't mix any more of the other stuff, but I'll just finish it off so you can see what it's going to look like when it has been completely put in there. And it looks as though it is happy in that size of container. And that is what you should be doing. Not going into vast size containers where they will have too much compost, there'll be too much water. This is the best thing to do. Slow and steady potting up. Keep your life simple. Buy four or five plants, start working with those, some straight into the garden, some going up and waiting for them to root down, and they will be very happy plants for you. Once you have got all of your plants potted up, they will need some water. Do not give them too much at a time, just give them a little bit and you can either water over the top with a watering can or you can get a tray which holds water and you can place your plants into that tray of water and they will then draw that up from beneath. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel.